This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You are welcome, child of God. You are welcome, believer in Christ. This is another powerful time in the presence of God. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And remember, joy is like it's like medicine that you take and it works good in your body. But when you are sorrowful, when you are sad, it will drain your strength, it will drain your energy, and it's not good for you. Please always make sure you are happy, happy in the Lord. The Bible says, Our faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we bring to you again word from the Lord. And as you're about to listen to this word, please open up your heart because God is set to do something very, very remarkable in your life. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Is that in your Bible? A broken and a contrite heart. Oh God! Any man, any man that encounters the God of the Bible, any man that touches God from what flows from him to you, you cannot remain the same. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you, Lord. This is a very powerful prayer. In fact, that, that's the part I want you to say again. Do to me what you want. It's, it's, a, it's a prayer, it's a surrender. Do to me what you want. Forget that I'm a man of God. I come as your child. Take away apostle and prophet. Take away whatever it is. Those titles can be interruptions to your having an encounter. I am Geo. I am president. When you come before God, you take away your golden crowns and cry before your maker. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. If there be any wicked way in me, lead me to the way of everlasting. Let me tell you the truth. When God stretches his hands and allows you to touch him, the first thing that happens to you is that everything that is not him becomes threatened in your life immediately. Everything that is not him, everything, it dies, a, a war, a real warfare begins from within you. You see, you will never know how many luggages are there interrupting your flight in the spirit until he touches you. When something flows from the God of the Bible to you, it's impossible to sleep and be at peace. No, you will find out that you don't even want to be among a crowd again. You will walk alone like a madman. It's a season of con. There, there is a pruning. At that point, you will not think of your titles again. At that point, you will not think of your accolades again. It is the reason why we fast, yet we don't receive anything. Because we don't use them as vehicles to touch him. We use them as vehicles to create pride and accolades. It's the reason why we pray and as sincere as it is, we don't touch him. Is the reason why we read sincerely and quote scripture. Yet the corresponding evident transformation does not follow. Who touched me? There are evidences that follow men. When God reaches down to touch you, it is because like the seraphs, he wants to roll away that iniquity. He wants to roll away that sin from your life and bring you to a point where you are purified like gold. Purified like gold. Purified like gold. Is somebody learning tonight? Purified like gold. Let me tell you the truth. Your service is useless until the state of your heart is pure. 
your service to God is useless until the state of your heart is pure. Your service will do not much to if you it doesn't matter how effective the service is until God finds a genuine vessel, your service will be wanting. Number two, very quickly, there are clear, unmistakable evidences when men meet God. One is a revelation of the true state of your heart that leads to reverence and honor. Number two, superior proof producing wisdom. The second evidence, when men touch God, among the many things we have to see in their life, is superior, comma, proof producing wisdom. Because there are different levels of wisdom. There is wisdom, earthly wisdom, that just puffs up and does not produce results. Superior proof producing wisdom. Proverbs 9 and verse 10. I want us to shout this scripture together. Because the fear of the Lord leads you somewhere. It's like a vehicle. Are you ready? One to read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So any wisdom that was not derived from the fear of the Lord is corrupted wisdom. And it will destroy you. Are we together? That according to scripture, wisdom proceeds is like a river. It is the fear of the Lord that brings a man into correct wisdom because from the fruits of that wisdom your heart will not be deceived by them because it was the fear of the Lord that led you to that place when you try to access wisdom outside of the fear of the Lord it will lead to pride self-righteousness and eventually self-destruction the correct pathway is that it starts with the fear of the Lord Yirat Adonai the fear of the Lord superior proof producing wisdom how do you know a man who has touched God you will see wisdom beyond your age wisdom beyond your level of education wisdom at a frequency at a dimension you don't have to be born again to see and know that this one is divine wisdom even as an unbeliever you see the outworkings the quality of the decisions the fruits of wisdom evident in the life of such a person you will know that that person has touched God. Number three. What is the third proof that a man has touched God? Liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty. Liberty. Give us verse 43 of Luke 8 and then we jump to 48. Liberty. How do I know I have touched God? Liberty. My God. And the woman, the Bible says she had an issue of blood. How many years? 12 years. She was not a careless woman. She made medical efforts to a point that she spent all her living. She was a wise woman. She had a savings account. But that situation depleted her until everything went away. She was sick. She needed healing. Verse 48. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you help me. It never said your faith has healed you. It gave her beyond healing. Liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty. Healing. Restoration. Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 11. As I'm speaking right now, I know that the spirit of liberty is hovering around this place. That there are people who have been here. You've tried medicine. Just like this, our dear woman, you've tried everything as it is. That diagnosis right now, if God does not help you, it may take your life or take your family. There are people who are not sick, but the trouble on your head is, bet is better to be on admission in the hospital than to carry the kind of trouble that is on your head now. There are people who would prefer to be on admission. Come on to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Read with me, Koinonia. And I will give you rest. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. 
rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light i tell you sincerely many of you what you are carrying on your head is a demon that put it there is not god the devil is just deceiving you that is god that is just what is a lie he said my burden is easy my yoke is easy the burden that is about to kill you is not of god it is the devil he has added his load gently and quietly on your head it's time for that load to go down I speak to you in the name of Jesus every tree that my father has not planted around your life that is stopping the purposes of God from finding expression the Lord brought you to church tonight so that you will be free I administer liberty upon you by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated how do you know you have touched God you will look for what caused you pain what is making you spend your money without profit for that woman is was the issue of blood you may not have the issue of blood you may but you may the thing that is common between her and every other person pressing jesus is that they had issues the issues had name for someone issue of blood for you it may be issue of finances for another person it may be issue of whatever liberty you know that men have touched God because they walk away free. They go to him in chains, but they walk away free. The woman, after 12 years, she touched the hem of his garment and immediately that satanic, demonic issue of blood stopped. How about the woman who was bent for 18 years? Woman, you are loose from your infirmity and that moment, that demonic satanic thing left listen to me don't waste his presence every time God shows up imagine a loving father stretching his hands and saying you have gone through enough don't don't allow this continue I'm reaching out to you I know you are here precious Holy Spirit I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, you're here to bring revival, I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, hallelujah, listen, I've experienced the liberating power that encounters bring many of you do not know that when you meet God you are supposed to be free most people don't know they know they are supposed to not be the way that they came as at the time that they were before they met him but for most people they do not know that freedom and liberty is one of the benefits the proof that you have met him that woman made up her mind and said I do not have access to him I'm not part of his inner circle like I shared with you last week it is not in his schedule to touch me but a combination of holy anger and hunger pushed that woman and everybody was touching whatever they would touch she touched him sincerely he touched me Jesus touched me and oh, what joy filled my heart. Hear the song. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. How do you know that that touch has happened? Because a destiny helper that has no business calling you suddenly calls you and said, I had a dream yesterday night, never knowing that you were praying through the night and say, God, is this how my life will continue? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God can touch men, but men can touch God. I'm not telling you what happens when God touches men. I'm telling you what happens when men reach. If that woman was waiting for Jesus to touch her, she would have waited there forever. 
the most important thing is that there should be a contact something happened now I know he touched me favor happened and now I know he touched me and made me Listen, how do you know someone has entered your house without a word of knowledge? You will see that something has shifted from the normal arrangement of things. You can enter your kitchen and say, no, something has happened. Somebody has come into this place. And then someone may come behind and say, I came and you were not there. Presence creates effect. If it is true that you have touched him, your finances should not remain the same. Your dreams should not remain the same. The demons cannot come in and go out as, no, no. The spirits cannot disrespect that encounter and act as if it's not God that you met. Now, I know he touched me. And there is nothing you can't do. I sense an anointing here, my God. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. I want to use this song that ministers to someone. I don't know who you are. But it's in my spirit to just speak this before we continue. I have made you too small. Amen. Please be seated. Liberty. When men touch God, everything that is not by God, from God, has to give way. When men touch God, I want you, as you are seated here, I know that the spirit of God is moving, but you just imagine that you are that woman with the issue of blood and imagine that Galilean full of strange power passing you are already declared unclean so you don't have access to come into the city to touch him but since you could not reach him he has come this close don't waste that opportunity through pride the woman reached and she touched him a man of can touch God and his grace can rest on your ministry it becomes evident that you have touched God your preaching will change not by the sounds <laughs> but the life that is transmuted through your speakings while you are seated just whisper it oh Lord be man oh Lord Be magnified in my finances. Be magnified in my ministry. Be magnified in my destiny. Be magnified in my home. Oh. So I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. I need your heart. Lord, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. More and more. who 
are willing to look beyond the crowd, look beyond their pain. Losing blood is losing life. That woman was already weak. She had every excuse to sit down there and say, a compassionate Jesus should come to me. What she said, if I may but touch. She said to herself, I don't have the power to heal myself, but I can reach. I can come to God and say, my financial situation is going to kill me if you don't help me. I can come to God and say, the husband that I have in my home right now, if you don't help me, is going to tear this marriage into pieces. You can come to God. Can I tell you, don't wait till you are healed before you come to him. He's the only one who can heal. You come to him with that issue. You don't wait till you are healed, then you come to give thanks. He's the one you thank, but he's the one who heals you. Number four. What is the fourth evidence? The fourth unmistakable evidence that men, a man, including you, has touched God. Genuine power. The fourth evidence that you have touched God is that you receive from Him an unction that transforms your life and then from you transforms the nations. Did you hear what I said? Genuine power. You receive from him an unction that first transforms your life and then from you transforms the nations. Verse 46, same Luke chapter 8. Let's hurry up. And Jesus said, somebody had touched me not by word of knowledge, for I perceive that virtue, glory, power, unction has gone out of me. My God, I perceive people were touching me. The reason why I know they did not touch me, even though they were making contact, was that nothing was leaving me to them. I came full and left full. Nobody placed a demand. But a woman who never attended his services, a woman who never had the opportunity to sit under his teaching because of her situation, she reached out by faith and unction, glory, power, left God. Do you know, I submit to you, I understand this thing that Jesus has said. This statement, I understand it. If you really walk in the anointing, you will understand what Jesus said. You can literally, you know how you draw a drink from a straw and watch that drink? You put a straw into um, some container huh? and then you draw and you see it rising and it's reducing in the cup and entering your mouth. That's what Jesus was saying. You can feel unction leaving you. Not like it's killing you, but it's like a deposit for the people. You know when they are drawing it. I've gone to meetings where way before I entered the auditorium, you could sense a pool. You could sense hunger. You, you know that the people came to receive. There are times that you know that just a handful of people, people were just there for the ceremony, but the hunger to receive was not there. I've prayed for people and sometimes sincerely, of course I just believe by faith, but you know that something that was supposed to come out from you did not come out to them. And there are others, sometimes you are passing, you even have to turn. And like Jesus said, who touched me? They did not make contact. But the, right from that distance, I never make contact one-on-one -on -one with Reinhard Bonke. But my God, ask God and ask him, something left evidently from that crusade ground and landed on this head you are seeing. Who touched me does not mean who made physical contact with me. Who was hungry enough to discern what I carry. You see, you have to discern. The Bible says, he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. To discern. How can God be passing and he passes my problem and acts like he did not see it? It is very typical of God to act as if he did not see it. Blind Bartimeo cried. 
this woman cried Jarius the centurion cried don't keep quiet and just assume that after all he knows all things he knows my family problem the devil will tear your life into pieces you cry thou son of David if I can't touch you I can shout to your ears do you believe what you are hearing power there is no man that touches God and nothing leaves God and enters your spirit genuine authentic power power that produces results reminded of my experiences with him my god when his majesty reached into my room light at his brilliance this one it was not me that touched him oh maybe i touched him with hunger my encounter was purely a product of mercy but when he stretched that majestic hand towards me it's like connecting a man to high voltage electricity every part of you from head to toe resonating at the frequency of that power listen genuine power is not just by talking and making noise if you have an encounter with the god of the bible except you you met a demon power that transforms who touched me i sense that virtue has left me who touched me? Who placed a demand on the healing anointing? Who placed a demand on the spirit of wisdom? Who placed a demand on the grace for signs and wonders? Who placed a demand on the grace for influence? Who placed a demand on the hear ye him anointing? Who placed a demand for grace for wealth and abundance? Who placed a demand on the spirit of wisdom and revelation? He said, who touched me? You know that you have touched him because something leaves him to your spirit. Listen when solomon touched god in that encounter i hope you know it was a dream if you were solomon's roommate you would get up in the morning and say good morning sir not knowing the man that slept is not the same man that woke up something had come upon his life i hope you believe what you are hearing you want to take the nations for jesus you want to do mighty things for the kingdom ladies and gentlemen please hear me it is going to take beyond your zeal. There is an ability that only God has, is the ultimate custodian, but he can give it to men. My God. In ancient times, when you study classical Greek mythology, they believe that people, Zeus and Hermes, were Greek gods, and that they were part of these alien deities that came and met with the daughters of men. And so they gave birth to human beings that were half human beings and half extraterrestrials carrying, you know, they were not ordinary human beings. So when they saw Paul and Silas, they saw the mighty things they were doing. They said, no, you are not normal. You are a human being and something else. You are Zeus and Hermes. There is something God can do in a man that you will be as ordinary as you look. But the power that emanates from you, it will make people say, what is this? God for you. Who touched me? Who received power from me? I believe in the power of God. Oh. I will be wasting your time without the power of God. You will sympathize with people eternally without transformation if you don't have power. If the only thing you have is a salmon, you will propose things without the ability to make it happen. God can heal, nobody gets healed. God can lift, nobody gets healed. Receive God, no, nothing will happen. It takes power. How about wicked spirits that have vowed that they will not let your destiny go? Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy work, Psalm 63. Huh? It says, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. For as long as the lion has refused to roar, any animal can claim to be the king of the jungle. And while they are shouting it, the lion keeps quiet until it is hungry. When the lion is hungry, it comes with an attitude of no fear and roars across that jungle. Do you believe this? Let me tell you the truth. The church is not as weak as it looks. Believers are not as weak as they look. There is a momentum building in the spirit. 
It's not a momentum of pride, but it's building in the spirit. The church is gradually evolving, slowly but surely, to a place where there will be, it's, it's like a, a, a breaking point will soon be hit in the church and you will see manifestations of apostolic power like we have never seen before. I hope we have the grace to believe it when we see it because you will see raising the dead, it will happen like healing headache. You will see manifestations ordinary people I believe this I believe this that someone will come and tell you I'm about to be put in prison why because I'm owing 50 million naira and, and I'm sincere I've asked God for forgiveness and you say father in the name of Jesus let your destiny help I help this man and right in the presence of that man somebody who has no business helping him will come and say I was instructed by God go and find out how men like John Lake went to Spokane some of those people were led by God they had no money no nothing and before they arrived God had instructed men to wait was it not in your Bible that Elijah was living like a madman if you were in Bible days you would call Elijah irresponsible yet it was God that told him carry nothing and be on your way I've commanded a widow and when he met the woman she never sounded like she was commanded can I tell you the truth there are people who God has already commanded many they have been commanded to make sure you don't cry your assignment is to agree with God so that they will hear what he has said because he has spoken but you must echo it they hear twice he's spoken once it is your responsibility to make them hear the second time i have spoken once but you are here to, you have heard twice that power belongs to the lord hallelujah for many of you help has not arisen because you don't know the true function of power the true function of power is not falling down and standing up no the true function of power is influencing changes in your life compelling compliance correcting anomalies i'd like you to pray one prayer i think it was kenny or isaac when he came up here he prayed a prayer for grace once you are there say father multiply grace let your power rest upon my life tired of living a powerless christian experience someone pray tired of powerless worship powerless preaching powerless teaching powerless business powerless entrepreneurship tired of powerlessness by grace by your spirit let genuine spiritual power the power that transforms let virtue from the throne flow into this frail body this frail ministry this frail business this frail destiny Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Something is happening to you now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. One more time. Let it flow, let it flow. Uh, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow right here, right now. Hallelujah. Please listen, my dear people. When men touch God, something happens to the state of their hearts producing genuine reverence and honor to God when men touch God they find as a fruit of that encounter superior proof producing wisdom 
when men touch God they find liberty liberty that is clear unmistakable when men touch God they access genuine power power to change their generation power to influence outcomes correct anomalies establish realities finally when men touch God they encounter peace verse 48 please sit down verse 48 of Luke chapter 4 Hi. God is speaking to someone speaking to someone I'm sensing this thing in my spirit God is speaking to someone you need to find peace you need to find peace listen there is rest in peace but there is go in peace rest in peace we use it for dead people but go in peace is for people who are alive but are almost dead because of the kinds of trouble when you say rest in peace generally is for someone who has died and you are just saying rest in peace hoping that the person died in Christ but Jesus did not tell a dead woman he told a woman who had a dead condition but she was alive his final charge to her was go in peace do you know why that statement was powerful if Jesus left that woman to go without speaking peace to her she would still not be in she would still not she would still have a lot of trouble because she was going to now go back to people who had not seen her for a long time the controversy that will surround her arrival the benefit of her healing will not even be evident because they will know her they knew her yesterday as an unclean person suddenly she shows up and says he healed me was it verified medically are you stupid the trouble that will surround her life alone he needed to send her with peace peace when men encounter God John 14 27 Jesus said peace I live with you are you seeing it believers you need to know what Jesus left with us he did not just leave the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit truly but you left peace you ignored it thinking it's not important peace I live with you in this wicked world you need this oh you need this more than money my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth he says give I to you let not your heart be troubled this is what will happen to you when you don't have peace trouble and fear you will live perpetually trouble over nothing and fear people are dying your heart is palpitating there are many people today who have died because of lack of peace than actual sickness are we together especially as you grow older somehow satan has programmed this system such that the older you grow you lose touch of genuine peace and so you can see young people roam around because they are largely in ignorance but you see old people sit down and they fear everything someone will just sit down and carry a, a bp monitor and see that your bp has gone to the roof why is it going there i just feel like somebody is about to die this one is not like God is giving you an information. It's just the devil playing with your mind. Peace. Someone say peace. peace. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. Philippians 4 and verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, it says it shall keep your heart and mind, keep your spirit and keep your thinking through Jesus Christ. The troubles in this world are many. And let me tell you, if you don't have the peace of God, the devil does not need to kill you. By yourself, you will find out that you can go and fall down in a well and die. So, the rate of suicide has increased. Are we together? Increase in school fees. Increase in everything. Increase in fare, gas price, travel fee whatever it is and when you think about this sometimes you look at your children running around you look at everything you look at your relatives and you find out you are the only one taking care of 22 people and then the little money you have an arm robber meets you at the atm and says remove everything quietly and give it to me at the end of it you can go and sit down at home and literally have high blood pressure and die 
There are many people today, not just an African thing. I tell you, do you know that the world today is full of sad people? And people cannot, they can't smile, they can't rejoice. What happened? They say, I don't know, the devil is just after my life. They may be right, but anger does not drive him. Your sadness and frowning your face does not drive him. Why are you like this? I've noticed that people don't like me. He first started from my village, but now he's everywhere. Someone say peace. You must learn to have the peace of God. If you are in ministry, let me give you an honest counsel. If you don't have peace, you may not let, live long. Hallelujah. Bills, rent, criticisms, all kinds of things. If you don't have peace, you will not sleep. You will literally die from worry and lack of sleep. Then your children now come. Then your spouse now come. Then all the troubles in society. They promise you an appointment. They call you the night before and say, get ready. Put all your files together. Just be watching NTA or, or um, what's it, all the other channels. And you watch from morning till night only to see in, in the newspaper they are congratulating someone else. And they say at the 11th hour, they change your name. And you will sit down there and say, so this last one that was supposed to be a manifestation of God's faithfulness, this is how my life will be? Let me go and take poison or let me get a rope and hang myself. I have always wondered how people hang themselves. The pain of hanging yourself, you don't need to, you don't need experience, you just need intelligence. And yet people still do it. Let me tell you the truth. If you've never gone through certain things in life, you will not understand the value of peace. There are, if, if money could on its own buy peace, many rich people will not die. This thing called peace. When God gives you peace, embrace it and receive it, protect it. It's better to throw away your documents and carry peace in order of priority. Hallelujah. Peace. You measure my blood pressure today, you think they gave birth to me last week. I tell you, to the glory of God. This is God's ministry. I am his property, not even just his vessel, his whole property, everything. Find peace. I'm speaking to someone. I know that the rent is due, but find peace. Did you hear what I said? I know your son is not performing well in school, but find peace. I know the ministry does not have support. Things are happening, find peace. I know your marriage is having some issues. Find peace. Find peace first. When you find peace, a solution can come. Do you know one thing I like about that woman? Even though she had spent her money on physicians, she had every right to be angry. You do not see any display of anger or rage or emotions. No. For a woman who has been 12 years in trouble, she had every right to be angry with anybody. If it was that woman, she would have insulted some of them and said, get out of the way. You guys don't have the issue of blood. You have no idea what I'm going through. Clear the way for me. Let Jesus heal me before he attends to your nonsense. The way she was able to stay calm and rejoice, I believe it was one of the keys that helped her to touch Jesus. And it was one of the things she got more of after she touched him. Let me charge you. Place your hand on your chest and speak peace to yourself. Say myself, find peace. One more time, say myself, find peace. You may not understand what you are doing, but you just place your hand. Say myself, find peace. That waking up in the night that is already killing you. You are 21 years old and everybody is asking you if you are 40. You are tired of explaining to people that I'm not that old. They say, so why are you like this? lack of peace. Peace has added almost 20 years to your life. Return that 20 years to the peace and say I'm a young person. I will grow gradually. I can't be having the stress of an old man at 25, at 30, at 40, 45. My grandfather is awake. My father is awake. Me too, I'm awake. I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still 
and know you are God. Yes, I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you. Sing it one more time. I will be still. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still. Let me give you an honest advice, a fatherly advice, a prophetic advice, an apostolic advice, a friendly advice. If you let the problems in this life, bar, they will send you to your grave and life will still continue. Did you hear what I said? There are times you need to look at the storms and just say, do your worst. Get a chair and sit quietly. Did you hear what I said? Because life has a way of bullying you. And when Satan sees that you are threatened by life, he will magnify things beyond their proportion and surround you with it. There are young people who talk to themselves now as, as if they have a brain problem. Till they drive by themselves to a ditch, you will see a young man discussing on his own. He's looking at you. His hand is calculating this thing. Five plus seven. Eighteen. And you are watching him from a distance this guy was not born that way life for you I'm speaking to everybody here especially dear brothers let me tell you the truth don't I know that is good to be responsible do your best but while you are driving as the rent issue slap you on your face as the bill slap you on your face and as people are passing comments and saying you are not irresponsible don't worry you didn't send your, your son to school. He's owing two years in some um, college or university, one state. You have, you don't have, let me tell you the truth. Make up your mind and hear me. Find peace. You can't pay the rent of the ministry, the auditorium. You are in trouble. Are you going to pack up the church? The elders in your, in, will come and meet you and say, did God call you? I'm not saying you are fake, but were you called? And you know human beings know how to add we call it in africa adding pepper and um, adding uh, whatever it is it looks like this one that you've been you've not been your mother and father have not been happy are you sure that you didn't offend god that's what they told job and job said ah, 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 don't be hasty i will be still listen let me tell you this. Hold on before we sing. I was teaching at the uh, uh, workers' retreat and I was sharing with them some of the things that we've gone through in our little lives. I'm a young man, no? But there's a way life will give you gray hair because of the things you've gone through. Did you hear what I said? I've lived many lives in my life. Many lives. There is nothing that is as bad as his looks provided you can sleep and wake up. Believe me, storms will pass. Just trust me when I'm talking. Ministry storms, marital storms, financial storms. As they are coming, be waving them because there is a law. There is a law. It passes with time. Passes with time. Meaning you are crying today, but you will soon laugh. You will soon rejoice. Meaning you don't have a child today, but begin to rejoice. Because all those clothes you bought will not be in vain. Living children will wear all of them. Are we together? Yeah. That garage you have seen in your mind will not remain empty. One day an honorable car will be inside. Yes, sir. There are things you need to know about storms and challenges in life. Honestly, they come... They have an ability to bully you like they will not pass, but they will pass. What has Nigeria not gone through? Hey, it's Nigerians. What have we not gone through? Are you still alive? Are you still strong? Did you still celebrate your birthday? You think you will not celebrate another one? It will come and pass. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. What has your company not gone through? What has your ministry not gone through? What has, whatever it is. Remember, I remember those days when we were owing money from our crusades. If you ever told me these days will come, I'll believe by faith, but they look far. Here are the days. 
one day we'll be in a building of our own and we'll forget that there was ever anything like building project. It will come to pass. You will not be a tenant forever. Just know that. Apostle, but as I'm speaking now, my landlord has even sent me a text in church. Don't worry. Your landlord is not, a, he's not, he's not an angel. He's a human being. No matter what happens, it will come out of it. Did you hear what I said? I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you are God. I just felt like ministering this to someone, particularly to people who are going through health and financial storms. These two storms. These storms, ba, they don't have anybody as a partner when you are going through it. There may be people around you, but these storms are so personal. You will stay there, and that boat is rocking with you alone there, and you have to believe God. But I'm telling you this, you will come out of it. Amen. You will come out of it. You will come out of it. Hallelujah. So the clear, unmistakable evidence when a man touches God is one, reverence and honor two superior proof producing wisdom three liberty in all its ramifications four genuine power access to life transforming power five peace thank you for staying to the end of this video thank you we are very very appreciative of your presence in this community this is a community of believers we are here to enlighten ourselves through the word of God, through practical life applicable teachings. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. If you have not liked this video, please just take two seconds and just hit that like button and share this video with others to bless someone just as you have been blessed by these videos. It is only God that can do the impossible and where you are faced with impossibility in your life, the only place to run to, the only person to run to is God. And that is why we encourage ourselves to keep studying the word of God, to keep praying, fasting, to keep meditating on the word of God so that God will come through for us. Have a nice time. God bless you. See you in another of our videos. And there are so many videos that we have posted so far. Go through our channels. Go through our channel and check on our videos and see how impactful they are going to be in your life. Thank you. God bless you. Keep shining for Jesus. Keep shining for God. Peace.